Glenn Beck has gone back to his 2009 ways of incredibly stupid chalkboard conspiracy theories. Um, so here he is talking about who's behind the rioting and looting. That's why they oppose the president invoking the Insurrection Act. That's why they all collectively freaked out over Senator Cotton's op-ed. Have you noticed how many district attorneys have all begun to drop the charges and refuse to prosecute rioters? We've seen it now in Washington, D.C. We've seen it in, in San Francisco and New York City. It's happening everywhere. Really? Why? Why is that happening? When was the last time you paid attention to who was running your local district attorney? I'd be willing to bet most of us have never thought, gee, I wonder what's happening in the exciting DA race this year. I hate to do this again, but you really literally can't research or look into any of these things without running into, yes, spooky dude himself. Look, I've tried, I've really tried, but he's always connected to these things. He's a dark lord. He just is. Imagine looking at the current political moment and thinking George Soros is behind it. I mean, seriously, look at everything that's unfolded recently, whether it's the giant COVID bailout that went to corporations overwhelmingly and the wealthy overwhelmingly. Did George Soros make our government only represent corporations and bail them out while people got screwed? Did George Soros do that? I would guess not. Did George Soros kill George Floyd with the knee on the neck? No. Did George Soros spark these giant protests that happened as a direct result of that? No. It has absolutely nothing to do with George Soros, but he's invoking George Soros. Why? Because if you say, if you blame George Soros, that means you're claiming everything happening in the country right now, this giant left movement, it's just, it's astroturf. That's all it is. All of it is astroturf. All of it is like paid protesters. There's nobody actually really believes that police brutality is bad and that, you know, they want to stop that by any means necessary. And so that's why they're out there. They're not out there because they're part of the Black Lives Matter movement. They're not out there because of widespread misery, poverty, and degradation as a result of the looting of the treasury by corporations and the rich and Congress being totally corrupt in a complete swamp. No, no, no. They're not out there because of that. They're out there because George Soros paid them to be out there. So George Soros is his convenient scapegoat for the moment where he doesn't have to address the actual issues. Now, he says at the beginning there that, like, you know, he's for the Insurrection Act, and he's like, these people are against Trump using the Insurrection Act. This is coming from Glenn Beck, who literally used to do segments railing against government tyranny and government authoritarianism. And he would talk about, yeah, the government's gonna come take away your rights and your freedom. And now he's like, oh, I want the government to go take away people's rights and freedom, of course, because I don't agree with these protesters. Look how quick he flips on the principles he said he had in an instant simply because he doesn't agree ideologically with the protesters. And apparently he thinks they're all paid by George Soros or whatever. So, listen. Look how quickly they flip from, you know, freedom, First Amendment, free speech to law and order, send in the military, stop these movements. It's just so pathetic and so sad. And, and the final thing here is he was talking about well, would you look at that? All of a sudden, the charges were dropped on all these rioters. Curious. And he's trying to say that Soros was involved, and I don't know, he's paying the protesters, helping the protesters, or Soros got the DAs elected who are dropping the charges, and so that's what's really going on. It's, it's like highly organized and orchestrated chaos that they're going to get away with because the puppet master's making all the decisions. Let me tell you what actually happened. You had mass arrests of people who there was no evidence that they were actually rioters. And then now you have the authorities looking through it and going, we can't prosecute this in a court of law. There's zero evidence that these people are rioters. Of course you have to let them go. That's what's happening, Glenn. That's what's happening. They were doing mass arrests of people who weren't the problem. Some of them that they arrested, I'm sure, were the problem. But there were so many peaceful protesters out there, and they arrested peaceful protesters and pretended like they were rioters. How do you not see? There were so many stories we saw just within the past two or three weeks of 
media people being arrested when it was crystal clear they were media people holding a microphone, person with a camera, a CNN guy got arrested on camera, you know, when it was beyond obvious that he was with the media and he didn't do any rioting, he didn't do any looting, he didn't even do any protesting. He was just covering what was happening and they arrested him anyway. They're doing that on camera in the most brazen, over-the-top, clear way. I mean, that's authoritarian. There were no laws broken. You saw that. Imagine what they're doing when the camera's not on. They're doing mass arrests of peaceful protesters. Which, by the way, is part of the problem. This is part of police brutality. They're abusing their authority. So, the whole point of the protest was, oh my god, we gotta stop this police brutality. And the police responded to that with more police brutality. So, how do you not understand that that's what happened? It's not that... Oh, there's a big conspiracy, and we know that all these people are rioters, but, you know, George Soros somehow got them off from accountability. No! People were mass arrested, and they weren't rioters, and that was obvious, so they had no choice but to let them go. That's what happened. Man, so many conservatives just totally lost the plot. Totally lost it. They're all just what they were. Listen, for all the people who rehabilitated goons like Glenn Beck because early on he was saying he was anti-Trump, congratulations. Because now you're getting what you deserve. The guy was always a piece of trash. The guy always had no principles and no core. The guy's just a right-wing hack. And now you're seeing it yet again. Now he's one of the biggest Trump sycophants there is. He originally was against them. Now he's one of the biggest Trump sycophants there is. And he says stuff like this. Okay, he's going to defend it. It doesn't matter what you have the cops doing on video. He will defend it come hell or high water. And I think that's totally obvious. So from now on, do me a favor. Don't rehabilitate any of these Bush-era conservatives. Because guess what? They're just as bad as Trump.